am a child of God. This morning, I, I want to talk about childlike faith and what childlike faith means to each and every one of our lives. Now, before moving to Elkhart County, we lived down near Kokomo, and we lived out in the country. Before that, we had lived in a subdivision. But when we moved to Kokomo, we, we lived in a, in a house that was surrounded on all four sides by cornfields, as far as the eye could see. And I remember that the day we took our children to see that, that home for the first time, this home out in the country, surrounded by cornfields. We get there, and the kids get out of the van, and, and I, I, remember, I remember Gabby. She was five at the time. She gets out, and she's really excited, and obviously it's a new home, it's a new place, a lot of excitement going on, but she's a little more excited than everyone else. And she's just looking around, and you can just see it on her face. And then she turns to her mother and I, and she says, she says, wow. Wow, we sure have a nice garden. <laughs> now, take into consideration, for my wife and I, our idea of a garden is a tomato plant um, in, a, in, a, in a little container. I mean, that's our garden, a plotted tomato plant. And where she got the idea that these cornfields, as far as the eye could see, could ever belong to us, or if they did, how we were going to take care of them, I have no idea. <laughs> but I think, that's, I think that's what it means by, by childlike faith. That anything, anything is possible. Jesus had a few things to say about that type of faith. In Matthew 17, 20, Jesus says, Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Similarly, in Mark 9, 23, Jesus says, everything is possible for one who believes. And then Mark 10, verses 13 through 16, a text that is familiar to many of us. But Mark writes, people were bringing little children to Jesus. For him to place his hands on them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly, I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them, and blessed them. You see, as followers of Jesus, there needs to be a part in each and every one of us that with childlike faith, with childlike faith, says yes to Jesus. It kind of reminds me of a news report I saw several, several years ago. There was a reporter, and she was calling up individuals asking them if they would like a no-strings-attached free $20 bill. So she'd call someone at random and simply say, can I mail you a $20 bill? You don't have to give me anything. I just want to mail you this $20 bill. Guess how many, guess how many people said, yes, mail me the $20 bill? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Instead, they said things, such, said things to her such as, no, thank you, not today. I don't want any, so please stop calling. I mean, we have become so jaded with this world, right? It's hard to accept something for free because we don't really think anything is for free. And I have to be honest with you, if she had called me, I probably would have said no too. I mean, people are trying to scam you all the time, right? But there has to be a part of us with childlike faith when it comes to Jesus and his promises, that when he says to us, here, I want to give this to you, we without abandon will say yes. I mean, what if that reporter had called a little child and said, hey, can I mail you $20? What do you think that child would have said? I mean, without hesitancy, without abandon and excitement, that child pro probably would have said, yes, send it, I'll take $20. 
And then start thinking of all the candy that child can buy with $20, right? Actually, I was going to bring 20 Well, I did bring $20 today. I was going to give it to a child. But I actually put it in the uh, offering for the HIV AIDS. <laughs> so, so one of you is, is short $20, but it went to a good cause. So if you're a child or a childlike person, thank you for donating $20 to that cause. But you know, a kid, a kid is going to accept that every time and say, yeah, I'll take it. And similarly, as Christians, there are things that Jesus is offering to us with no strings attached, free, unconditional, and we need to say yes to it. Without abandon, without reservation, we need to say yes. I want to lift up three of those things to you. Three things where we need to say yes to this free, unconditional gift given to us. First of all, let's say yes to the gift of eternal life. In Romans 6.23, we, re we read, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, there is nothing we can do to earn our salvation. It's not like the good we do in life will outweigh the bad, and so God will say, yeah, come, come on into heaven, because I see that you did a lot of good things. No. The Bible tells us there's only one way to heaven. There's only one way to our Heavenly Father, and that's through Jesus and the gift that Jesus has given to us. It's Jesus who is the way, the truth, and the life. It's Jesus who forgives us of our sins. It's Jesus who took our punishment and died for us. So that when God looks at us, God does not see our sin. God does not see our unworthiness. God sees, and we just sang it, God see, sees a precious, a precious child of His. And here's the thing. You don't have to wait until you're in heaven for God to see that in you. If you are a follower of Jesus, if you have been cleansed by his blood, then even now, at this moment, even though you're not perfect, even though you continue to mess up, when God sees you in this moment, God sees his precious child, because guess what? When you fall down, Jesus is there to pick you up. And your sins are continually being placed upon his shoulders for him to carry, not for you. But I see it. And I've seen it time and time again that, that Satan will come to someone and start to whisper, even though they're a follower of Jesus, Satan will come and Satan will whisper, you know what? If you truly, if you truly were a Christian, then, then you wouldn't have done that. And you really aren't worthy. You, you aren't worthy of what Jesus did for you. God really doesn't love you. And what we have to do is just stop listening to those lies, right? And that's what they are. They're lies. And again, we're not perfect. We stumble. We fall. But as followers of Christ, Christ is there to pick us up. And when God sees us, even in those moments, God sees a person who has been cleansed by his son's blood. So never let Satan's lies deceive you in believing that you are not worthy of God's attention, of God's love, of God's presence. It's something that we have to accept freely, unconditionally. It's a matter of just saying yes, like a little child would say yes to a present on his birthday, to a present on Christmas, to a $20 bill just being given to them. Say yes, say yes to eternal life. Say yes to this gift that Jesus wants you to have now and forevermore. Second of all, let's say yes to the gifts and talents God has given to us. Because even though the gift of Jesus is free, when you accept Christ, it changes you. The Holy Spirit refuses to allow you to be who you were. And maybe the biggest change is that God begins to open these doors. He opens these windows for you to be Jesus to someone else. 
for you to serve in love and compassion. And when you do that, you become more and more like Jesus. And ultimately, that's our goal, to be like Jesus. And we're like Jesus when we serve, when we love, when we show compassion. And so God will open these doors for you. That with the power of the Holy Spirit, you can go through and be Jesus to others. Now sometimes God will call you, sometimes God will nudge you to do something, and your first instinct is to think, well, you know, someone else is a lot more capable of doing that than I am. Someone else is much more equipped to do that. I I'll let them do it. But what the Bible teaches us time and time again, whether it's Moses or Paul, what God calls us to do has nothing to do with our abilities or how well we think we are equipped. It all comes down to whether or not we want to be faithful with that which we do have. So God doesn't necessarily call the, the, the best equipped. He calls those who are willing to be faithful. I remember... I remember once volunteering to, to help build a, a playground. Now, that's kind of outside my, my comfort zone. <laughs> I'm not like a handyman. When I try to fix something, usually it just gets worse. So I'm not necessarily the one out there building things. I'd like to. It looks like it would be a great skill to have, but it's not necessarily in my wheelhouse. But I felt that gentle nudge by God to go out and to help build this playground. So I took what I had. I had some work gloves, and I had my shovel. It's probably this, this shovel right here. I mean, I took it from my garage, and, and right now we only have one uh, shovel that's currently working. The other one, the handle broke off. But, but I took my shovel, and this it's not even the best shovel in the world, Right? So I show up, and I've got my shovel in hand, I've got my work gloves, and I'm waiting for everything to begin. And this kid comes over to me, probably about seven years old, and he knew me, and I knew him. And he felt free, you know, speaking to me, and he's kind of an outgoing kid. But he comes up to me, and I'm just standing there, he looks at me. Seven years old, he says, <clears throat> says that sure is a puny looking shovel you got. Seven years old. He's dissing on my shovel. And honestly, I didn't even know what to say. And it, it is kind of a puny looking shovel. I mean, the end's kind of bent. It's a wooden handle. Um, it's a spade? It's a shovel. Regardless if it's a spade or shovel. It's, it moves dirt. That's correct. Um, and I didn't know what to say at first. I mean, what do you say when someone says you got a puny looking shovel, right? But then it occurred to me. I looked at him, I said, but you didn't even have a shovel, right? And without missing a beat, not even a second, I don't know if he was expecting me to say this or not, but with, without even missing a beat, he says to me, he says, yeah, my dad's bringing his backhoe. <laughs> Like, touche, what do, you, what do you say to that? I mean, and sure enough, his dad brought his backhoe. I mean, and he did much more than many of us with, with puny little shovels or spades could do. But, um, but here's the thing. Here's the thing. They still needed people with shovels. I mean, the backhoe did a lot, but they still needed people to move a little bit of dirt around here and there to level some things off. And so even though I didn't have a backhoe, I used what God had given me. And when God calls us to serve, when God gives us that gentle nudge, he's not necessarily looking for those who are best equipped. He's looking for those who say, yes, I will be faithful with what I have. What we have to do is listen to those those nudges, hear or feel those nudges, hear that, that still small voice of God calling us to serve, of God opening up these doors so that we can be Jesus, so that we can be his hands and his feet in this world. 
So with a childlike faith, when God calls you to serve, say, yeah. I mean, whether it's a, a backhoe or a, a puny shovel, say, yeah. Because we are all the body of Jesus Christ. God will use each and every one of us. Finally, remember, remember to say yes to the impossible. Remember to say yes to the impossible. Expect the unexpected. Know that when you pray for something, God might have something much better in mind. You know, we just went to Haiti, and, and every time, I mean, we've been there twice, but both times, I've just been struck by the fact that originally, you know, faith's idea of what to accomplish God's name was to dig a well. I mean, that was the goal, to dig a well. But God had something much bigger in mind. And so three wells were dug, and not only that, but a school was started because of a faith church. And now there's actually a church connected with the school. I mean, God had something much bigger in mind when we said, yeah, we'll dig a, we'll dig a well. God was like, yeah, that's great and all, but how about a school? And now a, a church. Or think about our, our daycare. My goodness. They're already full for next fall. And a couple years ago, um, we decided to, to bring our vacation Bible school to them. Many of them are unchurched. They go nowhere. And so we're able to come in and, and do vacation Bible school. They also have chapel twice a week. And in their classes, they teach about Jesus. But that's the teachers. This is, this is faith church, the, the community of believers coming in with VBS and bringing them the good news. 130 to 150 kids over the summer for VBS here at the daycare. I mean, it's just amazing. I have no clue what, what faith initially um, thought when they started a daycare, but it's full. <laughs> There's a waiting list for the fall. It's amazing what God will do when we don't put God in a box. So expect the unexpected. Believe in the impossible. Pray for that for your life and for, and for the life of this church. And that should be exciting. I mean, it should be exciting to know that God is going to do something amazing with you, amazing with this congregation. So I just want to encourage you with a childlike faith. Expect to, for God to do something that we never even dreamt of. Pray. Say yes with a childlike faith. Say yes to eternal life. Say yes to those doors that God opens. And say yes to the impossibility, to the unexpectedness of our great and awesome God. Would you please pray with me? Most gracious God, we do thank you for everything that you have given to us. We thank you for our gifts and our talents, whether they're, you know, the equivalent of a backhoe or a puny shovel. We just thank you that um, we can use what we have in faithfulness to serve you. And that when we give little, you make it Dear God, uh, I just pray for each and every person here this morning. I pray that you will bless them, that you will bring them into that life everlasting faith. I pray that you will change us, that you will speak to us. I pray that we may use our hands and our feet, our voices for Jesus. Dear God, just thank you for this day. Thank you for everyone here this morning. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like to say, um, after our closing song, after our closing prayer, if you want someone to pray with you, um, we will have some Stephen ministers up here in front, and they'd love to pray with you. Maybe it's about something I've discussed this morning. Maybe, maybe you are, are um, wrestling with unworthiness and you just need someone to pray for you and remind you that you are worthy in God's eyes. Maybe it's, it's something that God is calling you to do and you just need the strength to do it. Or maybe it's just believing in the impossible. You're kind of in a box and you don't know how, what to do or how to get out and you just need someone to pray with you and for you and, and remind you that that. Through God, all things are possible. Again, we'll have some Stephen ministers um, up front, and they'd love to, to pray with you, to pray with you this morning. But at this time, would you please stand with me?
as we join together in our closing song.